Do you want to learn grammar without memorizing any boring rules? Then keep on watching. Hi everyone, I am Georgiana, your English teacher, and today I will tell you how you can improve your English grammar without memorizing anything. I will also make you guess some riddles. It will be fun. Keep watching and get the transcript at speakenglishpodcast.com slash podcast. Enjoy the lesson. Bye-bye. Today we are going to learn English in a fun way. You will learn new English vocabulary through fun riddles. I will introduce you to some popular riddles and ask you to guess the correct answer. If you don't know what a riddle is, don't worry, because I'll explain it to you. And with a point of view lesson, you will learn grammar without memorizing any boring rules. Many of you send me messages telling me that you listen to my podcast in the car, walking, or doing other things. That's great, because you are incorporating learning into your lifestyle, not the other way around. That way, you spend more time listening and learning. The idea is always to accumulate many hours of listening for you to internalize the language. By the way, it would make me very happy if you shared my website with your friends. Tell them to go to speakenglishpodcast.com and subscribe to my free mini course. All right, in today's episode, you will improve your English in a fun way with some fun riddles. You'll have to guess the answer to each riddle. Are you up for it? Don't worry, they're not complicated. Come on, it's gonna be fun. But first, what's a riddle? A riddle is a type of poem that works like a puzzle. They describe something and sometimes use words with double meanings. First, I'll tell you a riddle and then I'll wait 10 seconds to give you time to answer. But don't worry, if you need more time, you can pause the audio. Remember that on my website, speakenglishpodcast.com, you will find the transcript of this episode. Let's start. Number one. What has one eye but can't see? A needle. Of course, the needle has an eye but it can't see since it's an object. Besides, the eye is empty. Number two. What has legs but doesn't walk? A table. The table can't walk, but not because it's lazy but because it has another function. Most people can walk, but some prefer to sit all day. Number three. What can you catch, but not throw? A cold. In English, we use the expression to catch a cold, and it's not like we are chasing a cold. It's just an English expression. Number four. What kind of band never plays music? A rubber band. A rubber band is a thin rubber ring that is used to hold things in place. It has multiple uses. Number five. What has many teeth but can't bite?
A comb. You use the comb to style your hair, so the bristles should not be too sharp. Number six. What has words but never speaks? A book. A book cannot talk because it has no mouth, but the author does speak through the words written in the book. Number seven. What has a thumb and four fingers but is not a hand? A glove. A glove has all the fingers a person has, and protects our hands. They help protect us from the cold and also from aggressive detergents. Number eight. What building has the most stories? The library. A library is a fantastic place full of books, both fiction and non-fiction. It must be wonderful to work in a library and read a new book every week. Number nine. What kind of coat is best put on wet? In English, we use the expression a coat of paint. When we paint a room, the first coat of paint is mandatory and the second is optional. Number 10. It belongs to you, but other people use it more than you. What is it? Your name. It is true. We use our name less than others. That's why I believe it's a big responsibility how we name our children, so that they don't have to constantly spell their name. Did you have fun? Let's continue with a point of view lesson. Remember to get the transcript at speakenglishpodcast.com. Okay, let's start. I'll tell you a short story more than one time. Every time, I'll change a grammar point. I can change the tense or the person. This way, you'll intuitively notice the changes. I'll tell you a riddle. Here you will have to solve a logic question. I will give you the solution at the end. Let's start. First, in the past tense. The father of two sons died, leaving a large inheritance. In the will, the father put this condition. The two sons had to race their horses. The slower horse would get the whole inheritance. So the sons looked for a place to organize this unusual competition. The race began but each son deliberately slowed down his horse. They barely made any progress, and so it was impossible to finish the race. Not knowing what to do, they visited a wise man to ask him how they could solve this problem. After hearing the answer, they started racing again, this time as fast as they could. What did the wise man tell the sons? Okay, now the same story in the present tense. The father of two sons dies, leaving a large inheritance. In the will, the father puts this condition. The slower horse will get the whole inheritance. So the sons look for a place to organize this unusual competition. The race begins, but each son 
slows down his horse deliberately. They hardly make any progress, and so it's impossible to finish the race. Not knowing what to do, they visit a wise man to ask him how they can solve this problem. After hearing the answer, they start racing again, this time as fast as they can. What did the wise man tell the sons? Well, it's the end of this point of view lesson. Do you have the right answer? It's easy, right? Well, it's not easy at all. It's a complex problem. The answer is this. The wise man tells them to swap their horses. That way, the son who wins the race gets the inheritance. Because he doesn't win with his horse. He wins with his brother's horse. Clever, right? I wouldn't have guessed the right answer in a hundred years. Okay, it's the end of this short lesson. As you can see, just by changing a point of view of the story, you can learn grammar intuitively. This is one of the techniques that I use in my premium courses. I recommend you take a look at speakenglishpodcast.com slash courses. Okay, this is the end of this episode. Remember to listen to it several times. It will help you with your English. See you soon. Bye-bye. Did you enjoy today's episode? Get the transcript now at speakenglishpodcast.com.